If you don't have good news, bad news, raising stakes, and, and, and uh, uh, ticking clocks on every page of your story, your story is going to be boring. You, you watch like the Avengers, for example, everyone is super good looking and no one say anything about it. Like, oh my God, they're so beautiful. No, they all in the story about the concept and they, they are involved in it. But what we do differently are two things. One is we're going to probably make the movie. You know, if we pick, if you win this script, script competition, we're, yeah, we're going to make your movie. You can't replace John Gielgud with anybody, you know. Usually to meet someone like this, one must go to a bowling alley. You know, I'm, uh, I'll alert the media. You know, it's like, this is a guy that has that delivery that can yeah. make those lines sing. With filmmaking, when you really think about it, um, the fundamentals are, uh, you know, you need a camera and you need a setting and then you need actors to inhabit that setting. And that's really all you need. It's intense to, uh, to shoot a story like the one that we did, 12 hours a day, 14 hours a day kind of thing, um, and then detach yourself from it afterwards. So I know that you know, when we would fight, we would, we would fight and that would carry over. And, uh, you know, and even, even the next day on set, you know, we'd kind of have to, he'd bring us together and we had to resolve some things maybe from the night before. Yeah. And it's not in the script, but you just went crazy and attacked the pirate. Mm. And in doing that, you hit your head, but I couldn't see that. So I just said, keep rolling. <laughs> and Pilou was on the floor, you know, crying. And I thought, he's so fucking great. Wow, this is not acting, this is real. <laughs> and then suddenly I could see blood on the floor. Any day now, yeah. <laughs> They're gonna uh, this is out. all gonna fall apart and uh, the costs will outweigh the benefits and you'll go get a real job. Mm -hmm. um, that still could happen. Any moment now. Yeah. Um, that could happen today. Yep. So I did this script, which was a U.S. Finland co-production thing. Hasn't got made, probably never will get made, but nonetheless, I got paid. And I've never been to Finland. So I thought, how can I write about, a, how can I write a movie that takes place in Finland if I've never been there? And I thought, tourists have. Tourists have posted their, their, their home videos on YouTube. I look for someone who is going to challenge you and, and, and work. Because I think a lot of people just want to start getting work right away which is fine, don't deny it if it comes, but you know, not everyone's ready right away and you just gotta really be confident in what you're doing before you start trying to get everyone to like you. What's the target budget you wanna shoot this at? And I'll read it and the first thing I'll say after that is, hey man, <laughs> you done Zach? What? You done? Making noise? Yeah. Yeah. This is my close up man. <laughs> it's part of a producer job. I had a call with you. We were like, you were you were like days away from shooting, and yeah. you needed a location, and we were panicking because we had twelve locations and hadn't had hadn't locked in anything. And we had this like really honest conversation about like, if I just if I drove my car off the road, do you think the movie would, happen? would, would, would maybe the movie not have to happen if I just drove my car off the road? It was one of those. It was one of those kind of moments. And the other thing that I think we're doing differently, I'm certain we're doing that nobody else is doing is. We're engaging the audience right out of the gate. You know, um, most sites, they wait to make the movie and they deal with the filmmaking side of it and then they hope that the audience likes it. But our members are gonna be our audience. So the people that are voting for the scripts and the actors and so forth, presumably are gonna be our end users. They're gonna watch the movie. I could feel something about Joshua that would, that would be protective and keep us safe. But I do have to admit that, that Joshua is also, it's hard to talk about myself, <laughs> Joshua is also very, um, very brave. Uh, and, and in fact, the only person in Indonesia who'd come to Indonesia who had the courage to open this up in such an effective way over such a long time. And I sort of felt that someone who has that courage and the systematic way of going about things would have, the, would, would also was clearly thinking about all the risks and would, would be able to keep us safe. I, I feel that a film, you don't choose the, the film so much. The film chooses you, the story chooses you. And when, once it chooses you and you feel, you, you feel that, like that, 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 that's what you have to do. You don't, you don't, you're not thinking about where it, whether it's going to be successful, whether it's going to be good for your career or something like that. You just need to tell the story and you need to, 
give it everything you got and and it become and just making it becomes the reward in itself. You don't always write what folks are looking for. You don't always write what folks are looking for from you. And folks aren't always looking to read anything. <laughs> I think brands are actually kind of cool now, a lot cooler than they used to be. I think that they are finally getting the uh, um, content creation element to it. So as long as the creators are staying true to their content and incorporating the brand rather than highlighting the brand or making it seem like it was just for the brand, I think is a cool approach to do it where you can get a paycheck for yourself, you can get your production funded, and also you could work in the brand placement in a nice subtle way rather than hitting your viewers over the head with it. If I could own it outright, I could test it. Um, I could become proficient with it myself. I could try out different lenses and different filters and different stabilizing equipment. Um, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, we got the Black Magic, and um, you know, after watching lots of reviews for it, uh, and we tried some different lenses and we did some tests. Uh, and lucky for us, there was another uh, lens that had just come on the market, another affordable, really, really great lens. And this was the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter lens. The story would be no fun if there weren't twists and turns. It's so much more fun to get your goal if it looked like you never were gonna get it. The joy is so much sweeter on the other side of that. And so if you have a really huge disappointment, you should just know that when you do win, oh, it's gonna feel so good. That said, the gear, the things you use, the tools, the hammers and nails, they're not used to that kind of universe, so you have to have a lot of redundancy because things will fail, and you have to be very aware of the impact. If you work something in the cold, a piece of electronic gear, and then you bring it to a warm place, there's going to be condensation inside. So that's like a little rainstorm in your electronics that are designed to make it stop working at the worst possible moment. I was getting a ton of acting offers, but every single time they said, oh, can you come and we can maybe finalize you next week. I would have given my schedule into the hospital for my work. So, and those, as you know, in the creative field, it's all random calls. You, you can't really plan those things. You know, director team, uh, producer team come together. They say, why don't we cast Kalpana? Let's call her. They call me. And yes, oh, where am I? <laughs> if you find yourself procrastinating, how do you get back on track? Like, let's suppose you start surfing the internet and you say, yeah. okay, you know what? Yeah. Let's get back to the task at hand here. <laughs> that's, that's just that Trouble simple. <laughs> I, I look at my bank statements and, re, 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 you know, or my little kids' hungry faces and then it reminds me, oh yeah, I need to work. I would say it's better to do a little bit every day than to try and binge write. So just find, if you can find an hour every day, that might be a good way to get some work done. Yeah, the only way you can be true to the reader, I think, is to be true to yourself as a writer so I think if you I think a good rule of thumb is if it interests you and you feel really passionate about it then that's what you should pursue and tell it and first of all report it out as as thoroughly as possible research it as thoroughly as possible and then write the hell out of it I write every day. I write more than I ever did. I think that there's an endless appetite now for writing, and so it's not like I'll get to it eventually. It's, it's, it's a 24-7 kind of business, like every other business nowadays. I play tennis. How does that, how does that help? It, it helps enormously because that whole idea of how much you think and deliberate in a game of tennis, and how much is pure instinct, so you often play your best game when you merge strategy with instinct. And it's the same with writing. Thank you.